So I was browsing Reddit not too long ago and came upon a post that eventually got removed as it was brigaded by a certain subreddit. Hmm. I then uploaded a video about it, just talking about it, which is actually this video, but it got brigaded and so I had to take it down as people were advocating for things like racism. No, literally. A guy said, what's the issue with racism? Spammed a bunch of nonsense and generally the comment section there was very annoying. So this is take two of said video, this time with feeling. So let's get into what this post said and discuss the intricacies of AOT and why the Jaegerists just kind of freaking suck. I also want to make a quick addendum to this video before we get into it proper. When I refer to people like Jaegerists, I'm not talking about people who simply agree with the Jaegerist side in AOT or believe that there are a lot of moral grays and you can't consider one side the good or the bad guy. We're not talking about people that just think the Jaegerists are a well-written faction, or what have you. If you are one of those people, you are welcomed into this community here at Seat Tactics, and we don't typically care. I am myself a really big fan of Flock and the way he is written. I believe he's one of my top five, maybe even top three favorite side characters, and if not, just characters in general in all of Attack on Titan. But when I say Jaegerists in this video, take it from the side of super toxic people in the AOT fandom that have been ostracized for having and holding fascist beliefs, may it be misogyny, racism, or what have you. I think this is something that probably caught people off guard in the original video, so I wanna make sure that we make that addendum here to make sure that I'm not just out here attacking anyone who identifies with Jaegerists in terms of being a well-written faction or a protagonist in terms of flock. You're perfectly fine watching this video, and once again, you are welcomed into the Sea Tactics community because you can separate reality from fiction and you're not bad people. As well, this video is coming from the side of morals here. This is not coming from the side of who was right, this and that, yada yada objectives. This is appeasing to a more moral argument when I argue about these things. So with that being said, let's continue the video. That being said, throughout the video, we will be donating to numerous charities Nazis and fascists would generally hate. So what's the first one? The first charity we're donating to in this video is the Trevor Project, which is for LGBTQ plus people, um, helps them to find counselors and guidance. I think I donated like something like $25, but links to all charities will be in the description below. So first of all, I'm very aware people are just going to move the goalposts, probably try and brigade the comment section, whether it be a great or bad example. It's just the nature of the internet. Nobody can ever be satisfied, but I do ask that you keep an open mind as we discuss these topics. And with that being said, I want to get into the first line of this Reddit post. I didn't like Flock before, but there was no way I was rooting for the Alliance mowing down their own people. I was literally tearing up watching it. This comment is generally wrong and does not see the entire picture of the situation. While yes, these cadets were the Survey Corps' comrades and own people not too long ago, they actually are the ones that betrayed Paradise Island in the first place by helping Aaron and Flock overthrow the military by assassinating Zachary. After doing so, they established what is called the Jaegerists and defected from the established government on Paradise. They are also the instigators of of this conflict in particular and in this episode as well, with Flock ordering them to fire first. I think it's quite disingenuous to say that they were mowing down their own people when these people overthrew their own government. That's like blaming the victims for defending themselves. It feels disingenuous and it's not a really good basis for an argument. Like that matters to this Redditor though. This also brings into question what the Survey Corps, or as they call it here in this post, the Alliance is fighting for. Aaron Yeager is trying to carry out a massive genocide of millions of people by using thousands of wall titans to flatten every and all life outside of Paradise Island. This gets into his second comment where he claims the series is trying so hard to make Aaron out to be the villain, but the scouts have never looked more evil to me. Of course, this is following up the I was literally tearing up watching it statement, which should tip anyone off that 
this post is not one made in good faith due to the hyperbole as nobody is that attached emotionally to a bunch of no-named cannon fodder. They aren't trying hard to make Aaron the bad guy either. Aaron sorta is the bad guy because he's trying to flatten a good portion of the human population that days before had no clue who Aaron even was as a person, had no clue Paradise Island existed, outside of maybe the people in Liberio who knew who Aaron was. Nobody can really make an argument in good faith that the Survey Corps here are the bad guys, because they aren't. Though it's not as simple as the Jaegerists and Aaron being evil either, there's much more nuance as is the case for everything in Attack on Titan. The point of this episode was to show the moral grays of war and how the very neighbors you love can become your most bitter enemies in war. Then, when you consider that what they're trying to do is stop the actual genocide of those outside of Paradis, then it becomes pretty clear who the good guys are, morally speaking. While there are no morals in war, it's war. It's always bad, no matter what side you're on. The Alliance, though, is fighting for just causes. And what are those just causes? Well, to stop genocide. Because, as we all know, genocide is bad. Once more with feeling, genocide is bad. Maybe one more time, genocide is bad. Also, fighting genocide with genocide is literally like a giant pot walking up to a kettle and calling it black. It's idiotic to support something like that. Which is why Hanji even states herself that genocide is wrong no matter what. So, if Hanji, the leader of the so-called alliance, is in support of stopping genocide because it's wrong, then are they the bad guys? Yeah. What we can say though is that the Survey Corps having to go against people that were formerly a part of their military is some really heavy stuff. You can say they really didn't want to do this, but the options were to either let the Jaegerists get what they want, ending in the flattening of the world outside of Paradise, killing trillions of innocent people, or they can fight the traitors to their government and stop the senseless killing of innocents. I think this is something that Attack on Titan should really be commended for in showing the moral grays of war and how tough their situation is, because the dilemma they're facing is not something with many diplomatic solutions. I'm sure that this poster on the side of Flock can agree that when pushed into a corner with no solution, the best thing to do is fight back. Why? Because what the Alliance are doing is the exact same thing that Flock did, if I'm not mistaken, and that is defending their people. And not only just defending their people, defending the entire world's population from being murdered without even knowing what they did wrong in the first place. They round out their first third of the post with forget their reasons, forget their motivations, they look straight up evil this episode. <sighs> This is a really awful statement to make because you're essentially saying that every side that isn't the Jaegerists can have no good reasonings. What this comment is basically doing is it's shutting down completely any chance of talking, which is what many people will say to slam the Alliance. They're not looking for an open discussion with this post, they're looking to assert their opinion as the right one when Attack on Titan is known, as we just went over, for having morally gray characters that do right and wrong actions. It's not as simple as just they're straight up evil because they're not. The Survey Corps are fighting for their island as well to save the innocent lives outside of Paradise. Men, women, children, animals, plants, fucking foliage. Literally everything outside the walls are at risk, and I don't understand how these motivations and reasonings aren't good ones. Yes, killing people is brutal. I agree that Mikasa was stylized in such a way that was over the top, but if you go and read the manga, which I'm sure they did, you can clearly estimate that this was done for flair and the scene in question is being dissected and hyper-analyzed when the simple answer is the animators wanted to flex their skills and budget. It's not rocket science. You know what else isn't rocket science? Donating to charity. Next up is the NAACP, which is a charity to help communities of color amongst other things and many sorts of different fields. This is a pretty cool charity in my opinion. It's like they expected me to be sad when McGath and Shaddis died. Well, yeah. 
because it was an emotional death where the two commanders of the warring sides put aside their petty differences, accepted their past actions as the wrong ones, and to atone for their ultimate sins, they decided to stand on the right side of history by nobly sacrificing their lives, saving the Survey Corps as they escape on their ship to stop a person that wants to destroy the world outside of Paradise. What are they not getting here? Megath and Shadis' death are fine. This here just seems like such a big nitpick. But I was far more affected watching the Jaegerists get brutally murdered trying to defend their nation and their people. Like I said, I agree with the scene of Mikasa slicing through Jaegerists being pretty brutal, but this is where I once again, where I just believe that the poster here is disingenuous. The Jaegerists want to extinguish all of life outside of Paradis. Flock even said in a previous episode that anyone who speaks ill of Eren will be shot and murdered. That's not okay. I don't see the Survey Corps or military police doing that to their citizens. The argument is just a poor one. And it makes me wonder how a certain subset of the AOT fanbase can turn something that I think is not only really simple, but interesting with its writing and completely miss the point entirely. Like this stuff really isn't fun to discuss or argue against, but these are also the same people that believe Aaron isn't somehow the bad guy when, when you have the show fucking thematically equating Aaron to a devil in this scene. Then finally finishing up their post, they say, and the fact that the Alliance had the most ridiculous plot armor this episode did not help. Weren't they supposed to be the underdogs or something? It didn't even look like it a little bit. Literally sustained essentially zero casualties. Once again, this is woefully disingenuous. The Survey Corps has never, ever, ever not once been considered the underdogs since they overthrew Rod Reist and established Historia as the king. By the way, I love calling Historia king. It just feels right. This argument is it's just weird because when you consider what the Survey Corps has on their side, it just doesn't add up. So what do the Survey Corps have on their side? Well, they have two Ackermans, specifically one working one, Mikasa Ackerman, Thunder Spears, ODM gear, the elite battle-hardened soldiers that haven't died since season one, for example, John, Armin, Connie, Hanji, the soldiers of Marley as well, Gabby, Commander Gaff, to name a couple. Also, I don't know, um, as well, there's a couple other ones. Um, the Female Titan, the Armor Titan, the Cart Titan, the Beast Titan, and the fucking Colossal Titan. It's five. Five ones. Now, let's see what the Jaegerists had. They had Cadets, ODM gear, and, to be fair, Flock Forester. I think the reason it seems like these characters have plot armor is that the Jaegerists had a lot of normal soldiers with just ODM gear. They didn't have any Titans or elite soldiers like the Survey Corps outside of Flock. On the flip side, you can't undermine what they did in this episode too. They were able to take down the armored and female Titan. You simply can't trade experience for numbers, and it's obvious that the reason the Survey Corps obtained this win was that they had experienced soldiers that the Jaegerists just simply did not have. Keep in mind, Flock forced many cadets into joining the military, and as known throughout the entirety of Attack on Titan, those men and women seem to be made out of paper. <laughs> There's a, a really good reason for that too. They're cadets, trainees. They're not actual soldiers quite yet. They're not even assigned to any role. Though I still find this talking point strange. Feels more like nitpicking than anything. Not even a real talking point. I bet most viewers haven't even noticed this unless they're actively trying to see an issue in something. But I do not see an issue in donating to charity. The final one that I'm donating to is Doctors Without Borders. This is for people around the world who can't exactly get the help that they need. It goes to fund doctors to help, as they say, save lives. Thankfully, we're nearing the end. The statement literally sustained essentially zero casualties. Can't even speak. Sustains literally essentially zero sense. And I get it, English is hard. I literally just fumbled my words. I can't speak it well either, but damn, oof. While I found this video very cathartic to make, not once, but twice, I think what we can take away from this really, really strange debate is that Attack on Titan has a lot of interesting moral gray areas that can allow out anyone to see how any side escalated to the decisions that they made. And while I've discussed this ad nauseum for Flock, he's one of my favorites in Attack on Titan because his ascent into becoming a devil and a fascist for the sake of stopping Marley is top tier storytelling. 
He had no choice and was forced to defend his island with what he had on hand, something that the Survey Corps and Marley mirror later on. I can understand why Flock came to the conclusions that he did. No matter how abhorrent and wrong genocide, racism, murder, misogyny, and bigotry are, not that he's misogynist from my understanding, I just want to throw that one in. On the flip side, I can see why Connie killed Samuel and Daz, and why Mikasa and John felt sorrow and pain for killing their former comrades among others. It's not easy to war when the sides have been so blurred in Attack on Titan. This is what I think this post ultimately fails the state and even take into consideration, even though, in a sense, it kind of proves the point in a roundabout way if you're trying to dissect this post. The idea that someone can make a post like this is interesting in of itself as it proves the point that there are just so many grays and no one as an individual can be pigeonholed into something. That being said, their actions surely can, which is where I'd bring up the transition card from this episode. It seems they had to spell it out for a certain part of their audience as they may have not fully gotten it the first time through, though I'd say it's more like they just don't want to listen. The card says, when titans were the greatest threat, titans were the enemy. When countries were the enemy, they were the greatest threat. And for as long as people hold to firm beliefs, there will always be an enemy. This post tried to claim that the Survey Corps and what they dubbed the Alliance is evil. Yet, as the show literally tells the viewer, as long as there is a greater threat, as long as there is a different belief, that person that you hold a different belief against is the enemy. And so, who is the enemy for the Survey Corps right now? Aaron. Who is the enemy of the Jaegerists? Everything outside of Paradis. Who is right? Who is wrong? Well, my friends, I think it's quite obvious that genocide, or if you want to get nitpicky, omnicide is not a good thing. Killing your own people for speaking out against your leader is not a good thing. Because as Kiyomi stated to Flock, what happens if they succeed? There will always, always be someone that disagrees. And for that reason... Someone would try to overthrow the Jaegerist fascist nation, and once again, the cycle of war would repeat. This Reddit post is obviously bad. I mean, there is a reason they removed it, and as well, the poster in question was a Jaegerist too, which, if you don't know what those are, that's just basically, it's people that believe in real life everything Flock and Aaron believe in. I think we have a word for those. It rhymes with Yahtzee. Anyways, I've probably bored you with my rumblings, ramblings though, um, if you've made it to the end of the video, comment banana! As well, comment something positive as I moderate these comments and tell me what your favorite aspect about Attack on Titan is so that I don't go insane trying to moderate and delete a bunch of troll posts.